Well, and finally, the year 2019 is on its tail end and a lot has happened on the political front. And therein is my interest, from politicization of the war on graft, to building bridges initiative, handshake matters to the fallout in Jubilee, Kieleweke and Tangatanga, Inua Mama and Embrace, and all other related drama. But there are many lessons to learn for you and me as citizens. The political class is about self-preservation and very little or nothing about you. See, even the BBI process that was fashioned as a dose for the long-standing national issues has strategically been turned to a 2022 pre-March bout, a massive flex flexing escapade ahead of the big contest in the President Uhuru Kenyatta State House succession matrix. There is already talk of a referendum next year to, among other things, create more slots in the executive ostensibly to enhance inclusivity. Be that, be that as it may, but what referendum is required to avail medicine in your local dispensary? What amendments to the Constitution are needed to ensure all the 30,000 plus public schools have enough teachers and facilities for our students? What BBI is required to ensure farmers have the right inputs and reliable markets for their produce? Does that farmer in Nyandarwa, who has to sell a liter of milk at 18 shillings, care about who will be the president in 2022? Which political gymnastics will that fisherman in Homabe care about if he has no cooling facilities for his bountiful catch that will translate into better prices? What is 2022 about for the tea farmer in Nyeri or Kericho who remains a slave for the big boys in the tea market? Is a referendum in 2022 or competing presidential ambitions a priority for the pastoralist community in Upper Eastern and Northeastern? And the examples cannot be exhausted in one night. Sugarcane farmers in Western Kenya are still waiting for some magical revival of the cane factories. Other poverty-stricken residents of coast Nairobi and Eastern regions are patiently waiting for the fulfillment of the lofty jubilee promises in 2013 and 2017. Each of the 47 governors, 47 senators, 47 women representatives, 290 elected National Assembly members, and 850 elected county assembly members made a litany of promises that endeared them to the electorate. Can each one of them confidently face the same electorate today, 30 months later, and enumerate their successes? And does the electorate demand enough from the leadership? 2020 should be the year of reflection, the year of holding the political class to account, the year of demanding quality services and accountability in management of public resources. The year of rejecting politicians who thrive on dividing and polarizing the nation along ethnic and political lines. 2020 is the year to constantly remind ourselves that political leaders are not enemies. Only their interests differ. They never fight. They often dine together. They share leafy suburbs. Their children are buddies. In fact, my soundbite of the year belongs to Uwasin Gishu Governor Jackson Mandago. It should be the guiding slogan for 2020. And in case you have forgotten it, let me jog your mind. kuangaika <laughs> na kukasirika ni mimi. Imagine ndumepuika kure ya rice, tukashinda firi. Kuti ni kasema turudie. Ni kasunguka kaunti kumina tisa kuombea uhuru kura. Eh? Na ule mutu ametuangaisha hapa ni Raila. Handshake kafika na hani. Hey, Raila zaza ndi wako bedroom state house. Sasa wewe bado unajiweka pressure ya siasa ya nini? Hii siasa wachana nayo. Hata mimi nimeinua mkono. Upepo ikielekea huko chini, wacha iende. Ikirudi kuelekea huko juu, wacha iende. Ikienda north, wacha iende. Ikienda south, wacha ikirudi ikupate wewe ukiendelea na kazi yako. Ama namna gani? And that's my punchline.